Hello Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with an exciting build, assembly video, what have you, on the brand new, uh, the newest edition from Flightline RC. This is the 1600 millimeter Corsair. We are so excited to finally release this, and the beauty about this Corsair, we've got two versions. So today, we're just gonna build the birdcage top. This is the F4U-1A version with the light blue, gray underbelly. And then we also have a bubble top version, so the F4U-1D, uh, which you can also get uh, pre-order today if you're watching this video. And uh, it'll be here in anywhere from four to six weeks time. And it is stellar. We're obviously super excited because looking at Flightline's lineup, we've released obviously some multi-engine birds. We got the 1600 Tiger Cat. We've got the, the 2000 meter, uh, 2000 millimeter B24, which was last year's release. And then one of our most popular Flightline is the 1600 millimeter Spitfire behind me, sorry. And um, now we added our first or our second 1600 millimeter single engine uh, Warbird, and it is the first US one in the 1600 millimeter size. So we're excited about it, and we were excited to give you two schemes on it. It has all the scale fidelity I think you guys would look for in a Corsair of this size. Alpha did, and the team at Freewing did an amazing job on this Corsair. I just built it myself and was super impressed with A, how quickly it went together. I think the the thing that took me the longest was probably the propeller to put that on there. But one thing, that's probably the best scale feature we got on this uh, Corsair. Unlike some other Corsairs that have been released in the past, the propeller always seemed to not scale up to the plane. You're not gonna have that problem with uh, the Flightline Corsair. This prop is bad to the bone, but now, for the purpose of this build video, so we're gonna we're gonna lay it out. First, I'll go through the spec. So we'll tell you all the spec, battery you're gonna need, things like that. Then we're gonna do a quick unboxing, show you how everything looks when you get it out of the box, go through all the pieces that you're gonna need. Then we're gonna go through a step-by-step -step build, and then I'm gonna come back and do a little conclusion summary. So let's get started with the spec. All right, taking you through the spec, we have a 1600 millimeter wingspan, which is 63 inches, and the length is an even 1300 millimeter um, length, and it's 51 and 1 8 inches. As far as what's inside, the motor up front is a brushless outrunner. That's a 5055-340 kV motor, and that's spinning a three-bladed 18 by 12 propeller. The ESC is an 80 amp brushless ESC with a five amp UBEC, and then we're gonna have eight 17 gram digital Metal Gear servos and then a couple 9 gram servos, some digital and some plastic for some of the smaller bits. Obviously the foam is going to be EPO, but the wings of this model is what is impressive. You're going to see inside they utilize foam, plywood, plastic, carbon tubes, aluminum extru extrusions. When we get to the unboxing and you see this thing come out, it is very, very impressive. And then as for the recommended battery, you're going to need anywhere from a 4,000 to 6,000 milliamp 6S, and that should give you anywhere from 4 to 8 minutes of flight time uh, with a top speed of about 75, 80 miles per hour. So that'll do it for the spec. Now let's get on to the unboxing. Taking your Corsair out of the box, you will see it is a rather large box, actually. If you hold it next to the B24 or the F4, it's actually a little longer, but that's just because the entire fuselage on this baby comes uh, together. Unlike, let's say, the Spitfire, where you had to glue the uh, fuselage together, or the Tiger Cat, this whole fuselage is one big piece. So you're not gonna have to do anything um, as far as glue. And there's actually no glue when you take this out of the box. It's all screwed together. So pulling everything out, it's wrapped nicely. You should never expect to see any nicks or dents or anything like that. Uh, the box, sometimes the box is more impressive than the plane itself of how they fit it all in there. And this is, this is more of the same of that. So now taking a look at the wings again, they got beautiful panel lines, which I'm sure people are gonna be using their pencils and their paints and filling in and doing the weathering and all that stuff. So you have all that beautiful scaleness. Nylon hinges, which are nice and hidden. You don't really see anything on either side of the ailerons or the, or the flaps. And as you can see on the other side of the wing here, um, you're gonna have three servos in the wing. Two are gonna be running your flaps, one for your aileron, and then taking a look at where the spar goes into the wing, you see here, this is where you're gonna put your ribbon cable. So there are about six to eight 
uh, leads plugged in there. That's for all the lights in the wings. That's for the landing gear, which is in the wings. That's for, again, the flaps and the aileron servos, but that's all gonna run through a nice ribbon cable which plugs into the MCBE, which is really already done for you. Much like the Spitfire or the A10, the wing is made up of multi-materials. So you got foam, plywood, plastic, carbon tubes, aluminum extrusions, which makes the wing stronger but uh, than just solid foam, but yet lightweight and maneuverable. So this is the most exciting feature. Obviously the Corsair has these defining swept wings. So uh, we wanna make sure they're sturdy and you should have no problem with these. Looking ahead again, the both the vertical stab and the horizontal stabilizers, the foam finish is really beautiful on them with the nylon hinges and neither one of them have any servos attached to them. The rods are already installed in the fuselage. You're just gonna have to center them and the ball links which are nice, are already installed as well. So it's a matter of just snapping them on when you get to that point of the build. And then taking a look at the large fuselage here. Again, this is the birdcage canopy. So you got your guy in there. If some of you are gonna get the bubble top, the Navy version, that'll just look a little different around the canopy area. But you can see they have the retractable tail wheel starting from the back. And then you can see underneath where you're gonna install your main wings. You got a window on the bottom. And then looking at the front, I love how they made the radial engine look it just looks really, you know, almost scale. Obviously guys who fly big gassers are gonna yell at me and say that's not scale, but us electric guys, we get it. Then taking a look inside the battery hatch, tons of space. You'll have no problem fitting anywhere uh, from a 4,000 to a 6,000 milliamp 6S pack, which is what this baby calls for. I easily fit the 5100 carbon up front in the nose, and um, they do give you some extra nose weight with a cool surprise feature that you're gonna add that you're gonna see later on. But the multifunction control box, the Dash E, the same one with the L39 and the F22, is in here as well. So that's gonna control a majority of the sequence door lights and make it all nice and clean. All you gotta do is plug in your six channels, bind up, and get rolling. Then looking at the bags here, so you're gonna have one bag with your four propellers in it. They give you one extra prop. You're only gonna need three. This is a three-bladed prop on the Corsair. Then you have all the bits coming from your uh, propeller. So you're gonna have the hubs, you're gonna have the plates, the screws, and that is all for the propeller assembly, which we'll get to in a little bit. Then in the other bag, you, you bring it out. This is gonna be all your miscellaneous stuff. You're gonna have your two ribbon cables, which are gonna be used for the wings, as I said. You have your little stick'em, Thing for the battery so you want to make sure you put that on the uh, on the battery tray it helps keep your battery secure and then you have the screws that are for the actual assembly so here they give you six screws those are for the wings and then the two bags of four screws are going to be for both the horizontal stab and the vertical stab and we'll get to that when we start building and lastly you have your two plastic antenna pieces those are just for you know scale fidelity and you have these two big plastic pieces they're going to be what you use to attach the main wing to the uh, fuselage when you're done so at this point guys that's everything out of the box it looks flawless as you'd expect a flight line bird to be so now let's get started with the build Step one, obviously after you get everything taken out, is gonna be installing your horizontal stabilizer. And this is gonna be done with just four screws. Now when you get it out of the box, you will see that there's only three different sets of screws that are gonna be used to assemble the model. So you see six larger screws, and then you see two bags here with four screws each. Now what you're gonna to wanna to use for this are the non-flat version of the screws. So you're gonna need the rounded head is gonna be used for the horizontal stabilizer. So find those line it up it fits snug like a glove and you're going to drive them in and you're done with step one so next step is installing the vertical stabilizer again no glue needed for this you can see where it easily lines up the uh, vertical stab is going to fit right in and here you're going to use the other bag with the other four screws in it these have the flat head because those want to be flush these are the only screws you're going to see on the outside of the model so you're just going to drive two in on each side and we're all done with step two so now step three is gonna be installing the main wing. I skipped this step. They tell you to um, attach your control rods and hordes. I don't like to do that till the very end. Once I bind the model up, make sure all my servos are centered. So we're gonna skip that and move right to the main wing installation, and this couldn't be easier. So first things first, get your two wings and lay them right next to each other, as you see. We're gonna use the carbon spar that comes with it. There's only one. And the beauty of this, there is, a, there is a stopper inside the wing. So when you push the carbon spar in, it will stop where it needs to stop. Then what you're gonna do is, I, what I did was get the carbon spar into the other side of the wing, but don't push it in yet. 
what you want to do is go and grab your ribbon cables because once you put this together even though there's no glue it's not like you can easily take it apart and put them in later but at this point you want to install the ribbon cables because when you have them uh, when you have the wing together you're not going to be able to reach those ribbon cables i had a hard time so i had to unscrew it and take it apart put the ribbon cables in and then screw it back together now once you're done there you can see the two points you're going to use two of the six screws that would be the only screws left at this point you're going to have six screws in there for the wing you're going to use two here to uh attach the wing and make it one wing together as you can see here and now you're going to flip the fuselage over and we're going to get right to attaching this main wing that's now complete to the fuselage so what you want to do is guide your ribbon cables through the hole there's only one place they can go then they give you the two plastic bits here the large plastic bits similar to the spitfire or i know the me262 has them a lot of our free wing and flight line models use these they're going to help secure the wing in place so you fit those in and then you're just going to take the four remaining screws these are the pwm 4x8 screws uh, and you're going to drive those in and now you have a virtually completed um, f4u 1a corsair if you got the birdcage so now after this the only two scale accessories they give you are just two antenna uh, the larger antenna is going to be right in the slot that's on the battery hatch and the smaller antenna is going to go on the fuselage and there's really only one way they can fit so uh should be pretty easy there and i didn't even use any glue for them they uh they go in pretty nice and snug and shouldn't fall out so now what i would do here is bind up your model and let's attach all the control rods so i'm going to lay these out for you uh if you see the push rod instructions all the ball links are already attached to the clevises the control horns so you don't even have to worry about what hole those go into you're just worried about where the push rods go into the servo and the beauty is the rudder elevator the steering gear push rods they're already in there you're just going to have to make sure they're centered when we bind it up so all they give you is six push rods there's going to be two for the ailerons and they are 70 millimeter and then they're going to give you four for the flaps because there are two servos in each wing just driving the flaps there's actually three servos in the wing um, so make sure you just lay them on the table like I did and you can see very easily which is which and then you want to get those all assembled after you bind your mop. Now it's time to install the prop. This might be the longest of, of everything you do in this build and you're going to see here it comes with seven screws. There are going to be three screws that are 22 millimeters, three screws that are 25 millimeters and then one little screw which is going to be the final one to drive in your spinner. So we'll put him aside with the spinner and now we're going to focus on assembling the prop. So they give you two plates. You can see one that's thicker than the other. The thickest one is going to go in the back of the hub. So find the back of the hub, put that on there. Then you're going to see the three propellers have a little nub on the end. That nub is going to clue you in. It's pretty easy. There's only one way these are going to fit, being that that nub is there. You're going to find it into, you're going to find that nub, find where it goes on each side, put the propeller in, then you're going to use the smaller, thinner plate on top of the propellers. Then you're going to put the final hub on it, and it should look like this once you're holding it together. And then from here, it's very easy. I just laid it down on my table here. And now you want to make sure, uh, don't, don't forget, these six screws they give you, there are definitely three that are longer than the others. So the longer ones are going to go on the inner circle, and the shorter ones are going to go on the outside uh, circle, so farther up on the propeller if you will. So as you can see here, and they'll really only fit one way. If you put a shorter screw into the middle, you'll see that it doesn't catch. So it'll give you um, a pretty obvious notion that you're going to have to, that you're using the wrong screw. And then just make sure you use the little um, washers that come with them. That'll help keep the prop secure. And once you have this prop built, now it's just fitting it on the uh, motor. So the motor already has a nut on it. So it's going to fit perfectly flush when you slide it on there. Then you can use a screw to put on the spinner underneath and then the obviously the decorative front spinner on as well now one awesome feature that they included with the propeller and the whole motor mount um, if you look here there are three screws that you can take off the entire cowl so your, your prop has to be removed for this um, and they give you these two weights so these are weighted look like circular cylinders I thought they were gonna somehow fit on the propeller but they don't what you're gonna do is remove the cowl and it comes off very easy again three screws you can see it pulls right off and then when you look inside the cowl you're gonna see there's already four weights installed there with some tape 
and there's extra holes. You can add an extra four weight. So say you're working with a lighter battery and you can't get that nose weight. You could just add in more weight into the cowl, which is a really nice feature. I thought this was really cool. So I'm gonna have to do some playing with it when we're out of the field, because uh, I plan on flying this on a 5,000 uh, milliamp Admiral. I would love to be able to use my 4,000 milliamp Admirals and also the new 5100 Admiral Carbon. So I may have to be uh, taking the cowl off, which is simple, um, and just experimenting with it and see how my CG plays out. But a really cool feature, glad they did it. And as you can see here, once it's all installed, that prop looks mean. So now guys, at this point in the build, you're gonna be done. You have everything built, assembled, so now you can start adding your decals. If you go with the birdcage version, like I got, uh, there's minimal decals that you're gonna have to put on. They give you two different li liveries. I went with the Daphne C, just cause I like nose art on my model, but very simple to put on. No water slides, which I wish they had, but they don't. But for the most part, everything else looks good. Big, nice big roundels, and it's a really sharp looking model uh, when you get all the decals on. And then lastly, you're gonna be setting up your rates and your CG. Right now, the manual is calling for the CG to be 100 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. So uh, we can show you that here. But again, you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to play with your battery and they give you all the nose weight so you can play with your CG. Make sure you get it right before you go and fly. And then as far as rates go, they don't call for any sort of flat to elevator mix, nothing like that. So the rates are very simple for low and high rate. Um, and again, these are always a starting point, guys. You're going to have to play with your rates and make sure that they fit your flying style. So there it is, guys. Back to me in the studio. That'll do it for the spec the unboxing and the build portion. We talked a little bit about everything. Now that I have it on the table in front of you, let's go around it a little bit and just show you some of the coolest features. So let me firstly plug it in. Canopy comes off very similar, reminds me of the, uh, the Spitfire and it does have the antenna on top, but plugs in very nicely. There's a couple solid magnets in there. It's magnetic uh, closed. So when you feel it closed, you're gonna hear it snap. I have currently, I'm gonna tilt this down to my cameraman. I got a 5100, let me pick it up a little bit. I got a 5100 Admiral Carbon in the nose. Again, I have not played with the CG yet. I just threw that in there because I was binding it up and uh, going. We hope to be flying this tomorrow. So if you're watching the flight review, remember we did the build the day before. And you can see there's a ton of space in the canopy. What I like, I went with an Admiral uh, Stability Plus Gyro and I have more than enough space to put it right on the wooden plate if you could see in there which it already did. And uh, you know, there's no reason the battery should ever hit it. And it's right next to the MCB-E. Same as the L39, we're using that new multifunction control board. And the beauty of this too, guys, is uh, the entire board comes already plugged in. The only two things I plugged into the board were the ribbon cables for the wing. I mean, the wing has a lot going on here. So I'm gonna spin this around right on its nose for you. And I'm gonna duck under, cause I don't wanna hurt myself or hurt the aircraft is what I care about more. But take a look at everything going on on these wings. From the two servos with the flaps, the awesome uh, landing gear that you've come to expect remind me exactly of my Spitfire landing gear and they do a full 90 degree rotation going in with the cool sequence doors which we love. You've got, la you've got lights on the wing tips and your left wing has another light here, a white light that stays on. I guess I could help a little bit with orientation for you. And then, you know, just some of the cool scale details, like the fuel outtake, they added this. This is the plate, the plastic plate that you're gonna use to screw the wing to the fuselage. And they, you know, molded the cowl into that, which is nice. I think they did a really just excellent job with this. So what I wanna do is, let me get it plugged in. my canopy cameraman thank you kind sir and now we're in so let's show you the landing gear so I'm gonna hold it it's a heavy model with the 5100 in there so bear with me there we go now it's on a bit of a delay like the L39 but then you'll see the nice sequence doors and then let me open it again for you. Sequence doors come out. That takes a couple seconds. 
here comes down. Nice full turn. And what I love about them, they are hard for me to do holding it, but you know, these are definitely going to be fine for the balance. And then check out the tail wheel. This is the coolest too. We have a tractable tail. So I'm going to flip the switch again. Wait for it. And we are up and away. And as the MCBE will make sure that the wheel does not turn when it's in. It will only turn when it's dropped, which is great. So it's not going to be turning inside of itself, maybe pulling on anything. So once we're down, now your tail wheel, let me play with the rudder. There you go. You see your tail wheel turning. So that's a great feature, and that came out with the L39. Let me put this down before my left arm falls off. There we go. And uh, just a great feature with the, uh, you know, with that new MCB dash E, which I hope people are enjoying. Um, there might have been a few issues when when the L39 came out, but I think it was just a matter of playing with your transmitter. Sometimes if your transmitter switch is in the wrong position when you bind it up, you just have to do a cycle before this starts functioning the way it should. But other than that, guys, I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous rendition of the Corsair. I've never seen it in this livery on a model this size that's obviously, you know, plug and play ready and you also have the option for the classic more classic bubble top navy um corsair that most most companies had released but getting a chance to do the birdcage is really cool and now while i have it here i guess before i get out of here let's show you those flaps so i have that down i didn't put them on a timer or anything so that's full flaps and you can see that they put plastic bits inside to keep them connected but they are driven by two servos the flaps so you have two servos i guess that just gives it more rigidity um when it's in the sky if one was driving it just from the far left or from the far right you know you might run into problems when the wind hits them but uh they just look really cool i really i'm, I'm really impressed with this we've been waiting for it for a long time i got to see some pictures of it uh, way while back alpha would send me but it's not the same as when you got it sitting here on your table and then let's just show you real quick. The Spitfire is about, you know, it's pretty much the same length, same wingspan. So it's nice to now have something else to get in the sky. And who knows, maybe the next one's gonna be an adversary for these two. That would be awesome. But guys, that's gonna just about do it for the Flightline Corsair assembly video. Sorry, I was with you for a long time, but this model is really cool and it's great to go through just all the features of it. So you can find them now on motionrc.com. Again, you have the birdcage option, the F4U-1A, and you have the bubble top option, the F4U-1D, which if you head over to Tired Iron Aviation's Facebook page or YouTube channel, he's gonna be putting up uh, a lot of pictures and media and of course on Hobby Squawk and RC Groups he'll fill you in. He's got the, the Navy one and hopefully me and him can get together and fly these bad boys at the same time. So guys that'll do it. Like, share, and subscribe. All things Motion RC and we'll see you next time.